Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a teaching center that focuses on hands-on courses to improve your skills and knowledge in general dentistry. And today we're moving on to part three of our cast called the Restoration Series on the MO and OL inlay preps on tooth number 14. I'm just showing you one of my cases where we uh, were replacing defective composite restorations with little inlays. And you can see the extensions uh, seem a little bit more than you might be used to seeing, but the gold will be nicely hidden. Here are the dyes and the wax ups here, just using a red wax today. And the final restorations as they're delivered. And when you see all of these castings while the patient smiles, you don't see a single restoration showing. So we're going to start with the MO on number 14 in the usual manner. First by utilizing the 330 burr for our depth cut. It's important to note that the 330 burr is pear-shaped, so you will leave undercuts if you hit the walls too much. So you want to try to keep this uh, in the block-out material or in the center of the outline as best you can. Now with the little slits placed, we now have a nice reference as to the ideal depth. And we can switch over now to starting the inlay. I'm going to use today a 55. You could use a 56 or even a 57, but this is a pretty small inlay as far as inlays go. And clearly this is a case that could easily have been treated with direct composite. Uh, we chose to do this quadrant in gold to demonstrate the various techniques. But we start by getting the proper taper on the facial and we just uh, keep the depth even with the depth cut that we already have uh, placed in the previous step. Remembering to tip the bird distally when we're working in this dovetail area and then leaning the bird towards the mesial on that part of the wall and the distal over here when you go to the facial area you'll lean it towards the facial. On the lingual you'll lean it lingually so your hand is always rotating perpendicular to the wall you're preparing at the time. With the basic outline form completed, we're now ready to start with the box with the 169L carbide. And you can see that I need to get a little bit more extension so that we have a nice 135 degree flare angle relative to the axial wall. And the tip of the 169 is so small it sneaks in this area quite nicely. We can now drop the box, keeping the buccal lingual rather narrow compared to the external outline form. And then once we have this little slot here started, we can now work our way over to the facial and the lingual proximal areas and blending the burr into the already established draw that we placed there in the first step. Your axial depth in a case like this is going to be about a millimeter and sometimes it's a little bit deeper. It kind of depends on several factors, but there's the, uh, the basic box form completed. And I want you to see that you can see a lot more wall on the box than you can on the occlusal because the walls are longer and they'll show more of the draw. And keep the bird tipped when you're doing the axial wall. This is a real important key to avoiding undercuts and it should be tipping about as much as that distal wall is. So these two would have the same draw. And same thing here on the facial and on the lingual. Everything kind of matches up. And you can see that we have that typical Dixie cup shape. And if there's a little bit of a tight area, we can uh, always just create a little bit more draw. As long as we're conservative, it's not that big of a deal. And now we're using the 43 off angle chisel. This is used for the mesial. The 42 angle off angle chisel is used for the distal. And we're chopping the 
instrument down along the wall, focusing on the line angle, and then sliding it over the gingival. So if you drop down one way, and then you slide back, you're going to make a nice line angle. Once again, chopping down and sliding that way. Turn the instrument around and perform the same maneuver to refine the internal line angles. So slide down the wall, focusing on the internal, and then you can slide it three different directions to get the point angle. There's the third direction when you go in and out like that. And then don't forget to go down the axial wall because the axial wall may have had a few little scratches in it from using the off angle chisel on the proximal walls. And of course the 233 Tucker gingival margin trimmer is utilized to create a gingival bevel. We don't need a bevel on the proximal flares. They're already flared adequately to create a slip joint and an excellent marginal seal. Nor do we create uh, an exaggerated bevel on the occlusal as some uh, schools of thought have taught, but this is the Tucker technique where the only significant bevel that you place is along the gingival. And the H240S carbide is great for uh, making the bevel nice and clean, particularly with really hard enamel in this case, the H248S. Now we're going to do the OL inlay, and this is one of my patient cases where the patient had asked me to replace an amalgam with gold. and and the preparation is really quite simple. You can see that we are 1.5 millimeters deep on the occlusal part and we're going to have the, the shape of the preparation pretty much the way the uh, prep is already there. 7404-014 carbide will create a rounded internal line angle on the entire preparation and that will be the entire prep. We're not going to have any sharp line angles. Everything is going to be rounded yet it's going to have tons of retention and resistance form because the casting will have long enough walls and it will lock into the tooth quite nicely. It is perhaps counterintuitive. You may think, oh, that doesn't look like it's going to have a lot of retention. It's going to just roll out of there. But you'd be surprised how retentive these are. Once you see them, you can hardly get them out. You know, you're trying them in, you can hardly get them out of the tooth when you're trying them in. Uh, and I've done... Uh, so many of these uh, preparations and uh, they don't just fall out. I think I have more uh, issues with full crowns falling off than I would with an inlay ever coming out. So here we have uh, the occlusal part. Letting the burr do the work for you, it provides you with a pretty nice uh, draw. It's not over tapered, it's just what we need to hold this inlay in place. Make sure you make that bale deep enough into the axial wall so you have enough bulk so the gold is not going to be uh, ill-fitting because of wax distortion. If these get much wider than the burr, I would opt to place more retention features like a pin or perhaps an exaggerated dovetail or even go ahead and sharpen up the line angles on the occlusal. But I've placed pins down here at the gingival and at the occlusal. Uh, pins that are part of the casting. So in other words, a hole you place in the tooth, and when you take the impression, you capture that pinhole. We're going to show that uh, in one of the other projects in this quadrant. The entire prep is just one burr, and nothing uh, sharp, line angle-wise. It's interesting to note that uh, your prep can be wider down here than it is at the top and it's kind of this optical illusion like it will have an undercut but because of the angulation of the lingual wall of the tooth uh, the draw will allow it to come out of there without uh, being locked in. So the next time we we go after this quadrant we're going to be looking at the free bowler and I, like I've mentioned before, we do have a course on gold. Check out our website, and hopefully you can attend. So I want to thank you for the uh, time that we've spent. It's been kind of brief, uh, but we are two down in these uh, five teeth uh, area that we're going to be working on. And we will cover uh, some interesting uh, other special topics in the future. Thank you so much for listening.